let's talk about how DevSecOps can help us understand what MLSecOps means. Most of us are very familiar, if you're in the development world, if you're in the tech world, you've heard at least of DevSecOps, and you may have seen this infinity symbol, which is often used to present what DevOps means. It, you go through the different phases of the life cycle, and as you can see, it's an infinity loop because you're never done. You're often iterating and iterating again and again, but the steps that you take tend to be repeated. So you usually move through planning and code. You start to build your code, and then you go on to release and then monitor it in production. And if we take a look at some of the different things that happen at those phases in planning, you're often going to start with requirements definition. What do we need to do? Do we need security in there might be asked, but what do we need to do? What do we need this software to do? What are the use cases? In the test phase, we do things like acceptance testing. You do quality assurance on that application. Make sure that it's ready to go out to your customers. And in operation, for example, you may be looking at things like the server configurations, the provisioning of the servers to make sure that you're ready to put that application into, into operation, into production. Now, that's DevOps. But what we really want to get to is DevSecOps, right? You've probably, if you're working in security, you know that the way to build security into a solution is to build it throughout the life cycle. So here we can see that DevSecOps realizes the promise of security by weaving security activities throughout the DevOps life cycle. In plan, we don't just do requirements definition. Now we're starting to build out specific security requirements. We're probably going to want to start threat modeling because threat modeling is what helps inform us in the test phase so that we know what we're testing for. In deployment, for example, now you're going to add on audit and threat intelligence so you can make sure that you're giving the best protection to the application while it's in production. And that's how we get from DevOps to DevSecOps. But how do we get from DevSecOps to MLSecOps? Well, first we have to think about MLOps itself. MLOps does go through a similar process on the second part of the, the process. So when you're talking about the deployment, the operation, it's very similar because it's a piece of software that's running in your organization. But at the very beginning of the life cycle, it looks significantly different than DevOps. What was the planning phase is now going to be the scoping phase. We move on to engineering data and preparing our data. And then instead of building code, what we're doing is we're training models. So MLOps looks very different from DevOps at that very beginning part. And some of the activities are going to change significantly. In scope, for example, instead of just what do I want this widget to do? You may actually be scoping whether or not this is an AI or an ML problem, because not every problem is ready for machine learning. So you think about what do we want to accomplish and do we need machine learning to do it? In the data phase, very different because working with data and machine learning is much different than you see in the development life cycle, specifically because that data is going to be used to train your model. So it's a really critical part of the entire process. In standard development, often you'll use synthetic data to just make sure that your application is going to be able to scale to the amount of data it needs. Machine learning, it's actually the data that, that the system is going to be trained on. So making sure you have the right data, that it's cleaned properly, that it's prepared properly, and that it's the data and the information that's going to be able to give you the analytics that you're building this machine learning for in the first place. The next phase, instead of building, right, we're not going to code this out the same way we would with a standard application with machine learning. In the model phase, we're going to find the right model and we're going to tune and train that model to ensure that it's going to give us the outcomes that we need. Then you move into what looks a lot more like DevOps, test and release, but we're going to do some different things at those phases. For example, in, uh, in release itself, then it's not just application acceptance. Now we're doing model acceptance. Are we, are we feeling comfortable with it? Are we ready? What architecture are we ready to deploy it in? Is it going to be a standalone app? Is it going to be shipped in a container, for example? And then when you're monitoring, you're going to be monitoring for some things that are very machine learning specific, like is the model drifting? Are, is the accuracy of the model degrading over time? And if so, do you need to retrain it? Could it have been the data that you trained it on? Was it not the right set of data? So we're going to be doing similar things in the second part of this life cycle, 
but they're going to be tuned specifically for machine learning. And at the very beginning part of the life cycle, as we discovered, very different process. So how are we going to get from MLOps to MLSecOps? We are going to build security in. And as you can see, the security activities are now represented on the diagram. We're still going to be doing threat modeling up at the top in the scope phase, but we're going to be threat modeling specifically for attacks and risks related to machine learning and AI. In the data phase, we're going to be doing things like understanding the, the privacy requirements, the secure data delivery that we need to do during, uh, you know, to make sure that the data that's, that we're going to be sending to our customers has been secured properly, is transported in a secure manner. The privacy considerations, as you've probably heard, as people are looking at LLMs, can be very um, important to make sure that no data is going to leak out of this model that maybe we thought was private, or perhaps that the model isn't going to be taken private data and then leak it out later. So these privacy considerations are really important. The model itself, as you're building the model, you can do software composition analysis. If you're a developer, you've heard this term before, but looking at software composition analysis and the, build, the machine uh, learning bill of materials is a little bit different than it is in DevOps because what we're, the artifacts that we need to record related to the machine learning bill of materials and to understand the composition that makes that machine learning model what it is, is going to include different information like what models are in use, the provenance of them, the kinds of data that you're using, who's trained that data. So there are different considerations, again, that are ML specific. But the similarities with DevOps and DevSecOps are that we once again have a life cycle and we are once again building security in to each one of these steps. So there's a lot more to dig into here. Um, we hope that you'll stay on your MLSecOps journey with us by joining the MLSecOps community and becoming part of the conversation. As we, as a community, as security and technical professionals are building out AI and ML, we really hope that you'll join us on the journey and start to create your own MLSecOps program within your organizations to ensure that the ML and the AI that you deploy are secure and resilient. Thank you very much.